Hello, I'm Guy Shachaf, Head of Information Systems, Eliashar Central Library. Hi, my name is Efrat El Ajem, Information System Engineer, Eliashar Central Library. We are broadcasting to you from Haifa, Israel, in the Technion. And we are both excited to be here in Igloo to present Liebland, the library self service solution. McDonald's is adding touchscreen kiosks to all 14,000 USA restaurants. Self-service kiosks are used everywhere, in supermarkets, pharmacy, bus stations, airports. They save time and money. The same applies for academic world. We see the use of more and more self-service technologies. This is the agenda we plan for this session. We will start with a short introduction so you will know us and our library better. Then we will move to the main part that includes the challenges, the technical difficulties and the solution we produce. We will continue with a live demo of the service. During this session, you are welcome to write down questions. We will address them at the last part of this session, the Q&A. So we would like to start by introducing ourselves. We are software engineers working in the Technion Israel Institution of Technology. As part of our job, we manage Alma, Primo, the library portal, access to database, and we are always and we always try to use our techni technical skills to innovate and enhance the library technology solutions. One example is Lipstick, the label printing service. I had the opportunity to present it last year in Igloo conference. Uh, in Singapore. This service is fully available for the ALMA community. There are already 120 institutes in five continents that join Lipstick and are using the service to print their barcode and spine labels. This is how our library looks today. As you can see, it is undergoing massive renovation. Let me share with you some of the before and after photos we replace the entire internal, only the external building stays as before. And now the after photos. Okay, so the after photos are simulated and were created by the design. I am sure that the actual library will look as good as in the photos. We plan that our new library will be a technology hub for students and researchers. The library will include advanced systems, totems, self-services skills, virtual reality, and Zoom conference rooms. This is the working process we had during the development of Libland. We will review with you the process and explain in details every step. As a technology hub, we looked for solutions to add self-service kiosks to the library. The goal was to be perceived as a modern technologically advanced library, improve the work efficiency and save time, extend the library service hours. We reviewed existing solutions in the market and open code samples. The existing solutions had a great user interface, but they were overall budget and not well always with an up-to-date technology. They included too many options and were not intuitive. Other solutions were not aligned with the technical security policy because they lack integration with our SSO. As part of the analysis, we were invited to Ben Gurion Library that uses cell phone kiosks. Well, we learned that the students prefer simple, intuitive solutions rather than fancy, complex ones. We, inter we interviewed students in our library and learned that most of them will not connect to the kiosk in order to review the library card. They will prefer doing it from their mobile. We went to McDonald's, not for the hamburger, but just to try out the kiosk. We also reviewed the pharmacy and the supermarket kiosk. We came back with better understanding of the way kiosk should look and work.
These are the five main design concepts we based on. Let's start from the top. Simplicity. Simple for the end user to accomplish his goal with no training required. Also, simple to set up and install new instances of the system. Next concept is a single goal. The kiosk should initially accomplish one predefined task, which in our case, loan books. Security. It was mandatory that the system will be fully secured using the existing single sign-on authentication. Next one is extendable. We learned from previous projects that the requirements and needs are evolving. So the concept of extendability is very important to keep the service relevant to the changing needs. Last concept is user experience. We worked with the library UX designer to create a simple and intuitive experience for the user. We gathered the requirements and the restrictions from the fulfillment group. The system should enforce the following. Books that are not loanable due to policy are already on loan. Users that are blocked for loaning and users that exceed their loan limit. In all these cases, the user is asked to turn to the circulation desk for assistance. This is a high level overview of the architecture. The server is running in the browser and communicates with the Libland server in the cloud. The cloud invokes Alma APIs to manage the loan process. Once the loan is completed, all data is already updated in Alma. Let's start with the recommended hardware. We use a 32-inch touchscreen, which provides a great user experience. It is also possible to use a regular screen with a keyboard. The computer is a simple Raspberry Pi that only needs to run a Chromium browser. It is also possible to use any other computer. Barcode scanner is a mandatory to scan the barcode on the book. We are planning to add support for RF scanner as an optional alternative. The last two are quite intuitive. Of course, there is a need for internet connection and the power supply. We use Chromium browser that is launched by the Linux operation system. The browser is launched automatically upon start in full screen. Then it is directed to the self loan site with a parameter that indicates the institution. The browser is configured without a navigation buttons and the address bar. Still, it is important that in every step of the wizard there will be a home button to avoid a dead end. The Chromium kiosk is locked, so the user cannot close the service. The server side includes the following components. The operation system is Linux. We run WordPress on Apache server. We use MySQL database. PHPMyAdmin is used to manage and configure the database. The web platform that runs Libland is WordPress. We use different WordPress plugins, for example, to enable Azure SSO. These are the client-side technologies that we use. They are very much straightforward for web development. It is important to mention that Libland is written as a single page application to provide an improved user experience. We invested a lot of effort related to security and privacy. The domain is secured. We use inst the institution SSO for user identification. Until now, we have experience with Azure and Novel, and it is possible to support additional identity providers. After a logout, we clear all the history of the transaction. In Alma, we created the dedicated circulation desk for the Libland kiosk. The circulation desk ID was configured in Libland so that all loans performed from the kiosk 
will be assigned to this task. In Anima Analytics, we built a report to view the usage statistics of the kiosk. As part of the pilot, we installed the kiosk in the center library next to the circulation desk. The librarians invited the patron to use the kiosk for logging. The librarians observed the flow and took notes. At the end, they interviewed the patrons and got their feedbacks. All the notes were gathered and reviewed with the fulfillment group. Based on the feedbacks, we improved the system. For example, as part of the login in the Technion, the user is requested to type in the full email. We found out that it is complicated to type using the virtual keyboard. So, we automatically added the Technion email extension to the input field. Another example, we saw that the use of the barcode scanner was not intuitive. We decided to keep it fixed to the base and in turn on mode. As a result, the pattern can scan the book simply by placing the barcode under the scanner. After the library renovation and the grand opening, we are going to add two cell phone kiosks. In addition, we are planning to add the kiosks to the 15 faculty libraries in the Technion. We are planning to continue and improve Libland and add the following features. We are working with a graphical designer to create additional design themes. Each kiosk can be configured with the desired theme. Recently, the student and employee cards were updated in the Technion. The new cards include a unique RF indicator. We will add RF Smart Card Reader to Libland that will enable automatic login. In addition to barcode scanner, it is possible to use RF scanner to uniquely identify books. These days we are experimenting with RF labels and plan to add appropriate support to Libland. These days, Haifa University is setting up a Libland kiosk. Their account was configured with the logo, relevant user information text, circulation desk ID, and API keys. In addition, the authentication is performed via Haifa University SSO, provided by Novel. So, if you want to try a Libland, follow these steps. One. Allocate a screen, a computer, and a barcode scanner. Two, contact us by mail so we will create an institutional account. Three, in your new account, configure the institutional single sign-on. And four, generate the Alma API keys. Um, 
Um, are there any questions? So uh, a question from Luis, he asks, did you use uh, SIP2 protocol or the Alma APIs? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, the answer to the question is no. Uh, we didn't use uh, the, the LIP2 uh, protocol. Um, Alma, as uh, all the developers know, uh, exposes a very uh, large variety of uh, REST APIs, which enable uh, to update and to read data for most of the models. Uh, so we are using, like from our perspective, the most uh, up-to-date technology, which is, which is uh, REST APIs. And this also enables uh, for each uh, different institute to use their API key to up to configure the system with their API key, so the API will go directly to where it needs to go. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, it's a person who asks if uh, the API can switch a security tag. So I guess uh, if 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 uh, if you have a book with some RFID technology, uh, can you switch uh, the tag on or off? So if you go outside with a book uh, that you haven't scanned out, that an alarm goes off. Yes. Okay. So it, it depends on the on the RF uh, on on the like the communication, the integration that you have with the RF. Uh, as we said in the presentation, this is something that we are currently exploring. Uh, we just ordered the uh, 100,000 uh, labels, uh, RF labels, and the uh, RF scanner. So this is something that is definitely in our roadmap. And uh, also the, the functionality to turn it on and turn it off uh, before we move into the gate. So this is something which uh, we are planning to do. It's currently not supported. Okay. So uh, the next question is the same as the first. Is the kiosk talking directly to the API? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, everything is based on a client-server methodology. So the server, the API key, and the, the communication between Alma server and uh, our system server is performed via the server. Mm -hmm. like the communication is done between the APIs is in the server side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, Chris asks, uh, do you have uh, an idea of, to do a mobile app? Um, actually, we, we, we used to have a, a mobile app uh, just to extend uh, the books. We wrote it in Android, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't think about uh, implementing this solution as a about as a Android solution. Mobile application, yeah. Mobile, no. Okay. Um, is there a chance to have a printer integrated for printing a receipt? Okay. So uh, this is again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we we visit in McDonald's, and McDonald's uh, you have a ticket which is being printed, but uh, we know from our experience that printers are something that you need to manage. Okay, sometimes the, the printer, you need to manage the ink and sometimes the paper is stuck. So, and also like uh, we're thinking about green and we don't want to use paper. So instead uh, we are working uh, to implement some SMS uh, notifications. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the user wants, because we already have the information uh, stored in Alma. So we can we have this mobile number. We can set SMS notification in order to get to give to provide like additional uh, notifications that uh, the loan was successful and maybe with uh, information about the return date. But uh, we we uh, we want to avoid using a printer. Okay, makes sense. Um, I don't understand this question from Chris. Um, do you have item security concerns, RFID or tattle tape? Does, does that ring a bell? Uh, yes. Uh, we used to have uh, the, the stripe, the magnet stripe of 3M in the library. Uh, we are going to uh, 
to this is a, like an old solution that we use in the in the technical libraries, but uh, uh, we are we want to progress and go and move to a new solution which is based on RF um, radio frequency. And once we will get uh, and implement uh, this uh, RF in the new library, it will include also a gate. And uh, our goal is that the gate will be uh, some uh, will include uh, like the security to turn that will like uh, make sound or some kind of, some kind of alert if an activated the book is taken out of the library. But in addition, uh, one of the temporary solutions that we suggested is that the area uh, where the 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 Libland system is being uh, located in the library in order that the, like people will not just go and uh, move the books close to the system and just feel, feel uh, free to, to live uh, with the books. Uh, so we, we, we are planning to put uh, CCTV cameras with a very clear sign that this area is being recorded with CCTV or something. So we think that like um, if we provide the, the relevant uh, alerts, people will probably avoid trying uh, to take books uh, without uh, without uh, moving them uh, via the system first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, question from Maribel. How do you, do you verify the user situation if they have blocks or over your materials? Okay, so uh, we consulted uh, with uh, uh, with uh, the relevant uh, system. So before we implemented, we did a, a lot of uh, business uh, re research, and uh, we are uh, managed. We we query uh, Alma because we have the details of the of the user, so we can query Alma to identify any blocks, any late returns. Um, also, that the book which is being loaned is available. Um, we have all this information, and behind the scenes, we are uh, uh, we are doing all these tests. And only if uh, all the tests are uh, being passed successfully, we enable the, the loan of the book. In other cases, we direct the user to the uh, circulation desk for additional assistance. Mm -hmm. And and um, do you manage book returns? Okay, so um, this is a, again something which is a, definitely in our to-do list because from our perspective the, the system already includes a barcode scanner and a screen and we know how to identify the users so from, it's just another API call. But there is another thing related to a book return which is a, like dropping the book. It sounds very simple just drop the book but we want to be sure that every book which is returned uh, already passed via the system, so there will be not be a situation where people return books, but they will not uh, like uh, sign off. Um, so we are thinking maybe about implementing some kind of a, a engine that will open a, a gate, so people will be able to drop the books inside uh, only after uh, they uh, use the system. Uh, in the new library, we already created a box, an area with a wall, like a slice in the wall where you, the books are going to be dropped. Uh, but this is something that uh, we are still uh, working on. Okay. Um, question from Sylvain. Um, did you try to authenticate Almas internal users? Or do you solely do SSO? Um, we don't work with uh, internal uh, authentication mm -hmm. uh, as part of our ALMA, everything. All the systems that we use in the library always use the, the institutional SSO, but um, I need to think of it, but, but probably it's possible because our current solutions can support any type of authentication. Yes. So, if I'm not mistaken, Alma also includes uh, APIs for authentication. So, mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a limitation uh, to use also the internal uh, Alma authentication uh, as part of uh, the, the system. Okay. Um, how many API calls do you do for a loan transaction? 
Three. Okay. So uh, Fat is saying something like uh, two, or two or three API cores for each uh, transaction, probably even more, because first the authentication, which we are getting the information, we yeah. provide the name, the name, and then we check the books and we check the like uh, is a card, um, about between two or three maximum for API cores per each uh, transaction. Okay. Probably three. This process is feasible. Um, will, will all IB support self-service or, or do you have to take care for location and loaning materials? Um, I, I, think, I don't, can you explain? Um, well, uh, as, as I understand it, um, so will you implement um, self-service in, in, in all the libraries or uh, is it location dependent? So, so can I go to library X and do? Uh, yeah, yes, oh, I understand. So um, our goal is to have the, the, the support in, because in, the, in Technion there are 15 libraries. We are uh, in the assembly library, but there are additional 14 property libraries. Uh, and each, each uh, like uh, uh, Libland uh, uh, kiosk will be related to, um, will be related, will be like connected to uh, one circulation desk. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, but again, sorry, when you are uh, loaning books, you can loan only the books which are uh, in the library where you, where you are, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this question becomes relevant only when you're returning book. Yes, that's true. Right? That's true, yeah. It's true. So uh, this is something, again, we are not, uh, we are not there yet, uh, but it, we, it's possible that like, we can support this kind of uh, limitation. The easiest solution is just uh, to accept any book. There's no problem. This is the easy solution. The more complex one is to restrict the return books according to library. Um, and um, I'm sure that uh, once we'll uh, address this uh, issue, we'll get the relevant feedback from the librarians. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably will add this limitation, so uh, books will be uh, can, books can be returned only in the in the in the library. So to avoid like the need to transport books between different libraries in the campus. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then, um, what's your experience with response and av availability of the API? To you, how stable is the API? I need to give a thumbs up to Xlibris. Um, the APIs are working perfectly. Okay, we have a long experience uh, working also with Lipstick, and uh, the response time is uh, around one second, two seconds maximum. And uh, from user experience, it's working. Uh, it's working perfectly. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no like uh, latency that uh, the user just needs to uh, to wait. And as you see, as you can see, as you've seen in the presentation in the demo, uh, once while the user is waiting, we just put some kind of a progress bar, but it doesn't take more than one or two seconds. So again, it's all perfectly. Okay. Yeah. So Jurgen. Um... As uh, it's not a question, but there is a kind of self-service system which is used in all Denmark's libraries uh, with returning option using a smart box, which can recognize when the book has been put inside it. So that's just a, a, a side note. Um, so uh, Bertley has a comment uh, following the description of Danes. I wrote a few lines into uh, ID exchange for SIP2 or HTTPS. Uh, could be useful for future self-service development to connect self-check and mobile services and the library system. And um, I just put a link in there. Okay, so those uh, were all the Q&A questions that are available. Um, if uh, you have Q&A questions, not only for Guy and Efra, but also for the other presenters. Um, they are still online. So at the end of all the sessions, um, 
we'll, uh, if, if there are Q&A questions, we'll just run over them and, and they can answer uh, appropriately. Uh, thank you. There was another question that uh, was raised uh, and it was uh, related to languages. Uh, as you can see, the, the system uh, is uh, in English. But all the texts that are displayed uh, as part of uh, the user interface are, uh, are predefined in the configuration. We didn't show in the presentation the admin area, but everything that you see on the screen is configured, including the text. So it's possible to write the text in different languages. Okay. Uh, currently, only the languages which are written from left to right. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Israel. Um, but. Um, and, and this is something uh, that uh, also uh, uh, it's possible uh, to German uh, and different uh, languages. Okay. Uh, so for all the attendees, if you have questions, put them in the Q&A tab, not in the chat, um, because there is so much going on. Uh, we're missing those and we're focusing on the Q&A tab. Um, thank you, Guy and Efrat. Uh,